Hello, Steve Edelman here. Today we're going to talk about marijuana and more specifically marijuana and diabetes. I'm here with my very good friend and pothead, Dr. <laughs> Jeremy Pettis. <laughs> Thanks for that intro, I think. But um, yeah, so we're going to talk about marijuana and diabetes because it's becoming an increasingly popular question that we get, you know, what is the deal with marijuana, specifically with diabetes? And let's just start with some of the facts that, you know, marijuana is legal in some shape or form in most states now, not every single state. And there's millions of people using marijuana products, you know, smoking, edibles, etc. There's actually more people that use marijuana in the United States than there are people with diabetes. I mean, it's an extremely common medication, whatever you want to call it. And when it comes to how does it affect blood sugars and our kind of diabetes health, the, the answer is we actually really just don't know. So if somebody tells you marijuana actually does this to your diabetes, they, they don't really know the whole truth. Um, They're probably high. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, and it, when you think about marijuana, what's one of the first things that come to mind when you say, oh, that, you know, you're smoking marijuana? You think, well, you get the munchies, right? So then people will think, well, then that must not be good for you if you have diabetes because you're eating more and, and all that. And, and that makes sense. But interestingly, if you just survey, and they've done this, people that use marijuana products, type 2s, type 1s, um, and people without diabetes, people that use marijuana regularly tend to be thinner. Even though they have the munchies and they're eating, you know, or have a kind of an increased appetite, they tend to be thinner. They tend to have better cholesterols, and they may be more insulin sensitive. So there's this kind of paradox of like, well, if they're eating more, then why are they losing weight? And we don't know. And I always tell people, when you think about the classic stoner, I think Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, you know, and what does Shaggy look like? Do you know what Shaggy looks like? <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I know. The He's Scooby like rail thin, you know, yeah. that's kind of the classic stoner is this really skinny person. So, you know, we're actually starting to do research in this. And at UCSD, where we work, there's actually a center for medicinal cannabis research, which puts out grants to study, you know, cannabis in different areas. And I applied for and received this grant to study it in type 2 diabetes. And I have to tell you, I've, you know, we got this grant, but I've been blown away with how difficult it is to do research studies in cannabis or marijuana products. It is far more difficult to get any kind of marijuana product than it would be for any other diabetes drug, metformin, you, you name it. And it's crazy because you and I right now could walk down the street and go buy anything we want, you know, cannabis wise, because it's legal here in California, but we couldn't just go buy metformin. You know, you have to have a prescription. So there's this real disconnect between how easy it is for the public to get it and how difficult it is to do research in it. Any differences between type one and type two and relationship with marijuana? We, we don't really know yet. You know, there are some reports in type ones that people that use it might have higher rates of DKA. Um, so this is all kind of anecdotal, but we don't know what happens if someone, you know, wasn't using it and all of a sudden, you know, started using it. So in doing this research now, um, the FDA has these like kind of schedule of medications, one, two, three, and schedule one is like the kind of like the worst, um, most dangerous, most dangerous therapies. These are things that are declared to have zero medicinal purposes. They're highly addictive. You never would ever want to use them. Things like, um, uh, methamphetamines, heroin, heroin yeah. and marijuana is in that category. So it is like the, you know, according to the FDA, the most dangerous substance. And because of that, extremely difficult to research. I'm having to apply right now for a special FDA um, license to prescribe marijuana just in my study. And I have to list out, you know, why I'm using it, the kind of the whole protocol, et cetera. Can you call some in at my pharmacy? Once I get it approved, I will. <laughs> but um, so Compassionate I'm, use. I'm just, you know, it's been amazing for me to go through this process. And, and it's so clear to me why we don't have the answers right now. So what we're left telling patients, and when you guys are watching, um, what to do about it. Really, it's kind of common sense at this point. Obviously, use it, you know, legally, whatever your state, you know, mandates. And if you are going to use it in kind of moderation. And typically what we say is that, you know, when it comes to alcohol, alcohol can have a direct effect on your blood sugars. The alcohol itself usually lowers your blood sugars. We have a whole video about us, you know, drinking alcohol and talking about it. So alcohol itself has a direct effect on blood sugars. Marijuana, is, we think, is more of an indirect effect that maybe you're not as with it as you might be. Maybe you have munchies, you know, it, it, it changes your habits and not so much directly on the blood sugars. But that's kind of all we know for now. So if you use it, use it legally, use it safely, um, and just wait for our research studies to come out. 
I appreciate that. Two last things. On, in our video vault on our website, Jeremy gives an excellent lecture on some of the scientific background between marijuana and diabetes. And the other thing is, if you've ever been to a medicinal store, um, you can get vapes, you can get, like you said, edibles. And how do you study each of those forms of marijuana? So just be careful. Well, that's our next challenge. You do edibles, I'll smoke and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so we'll see you for that one, guys. Okay. Take care.